uh, I just see a, a man in a black suit with one of those tall black top hats. Mm -hmm. Those Disgusting. shoes are like, you know those saddle shoes with the black and the, mm -hmm. they're not white but off-white. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those suits um, with the long jackets. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Where is he? I didn't see a place yet, but I could just see that. Mm -hmm. Can you connect with this man? I'll try. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself. It feels like he has a beard. Mm -hmm. It feels like that similar look of um, Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. I don't understand timing or clothing or, you know, if this is that era. Mm -hmm. I don't know. All right. What do you see around this man? Do you see anything else? Or do you just see him? I don't really see anything. Mm -hmm. So let's connect with this man, mind to mind, heart to heart. And let's find out who this man is. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? Um, I'm trying to get more into Mm -hmm. Him? Yes. There's a ruffling whitish shirt coming out of the top of the suit and mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm picking up a glass. I'll just, I'm him now. I'm All being right. him. All right. Or it's more I'm observing, but I'm trying to connect. Mm -hmm. I see a big ring on his right hand and he's picking up a glass of alcoholic beverage, so he's somewhere um, standing. Okay, so I'm somewhere standing. What else are you doing there? What is it that you're doing in this place, having a drink? Look around you. I mean, I feel like it's a social gathering, but mm -hmm. I'm not seeing anything else. Mm -hmm. So now is when we go into our knowing. Allow yourself to just know where you are. What is this place? What does it feel like to you? Are you indoors or outdoors? I'll say the word mm -hmm. that's coming, mm -hmm. and I don't really know what this is. Um, brothel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're in a brothel? I don't know what that is, really. Mm -hmm. So let's find out who you're there to meet. I don't feel that I'm there to meet anybody. Mm -hmm. It feels observer. An observer, okay. What happens next? I do think there's a show going on, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm like way back in the background and people are sitting and there's a show. And mm -hmm. What kind it's of show? It's very vague. Mm -hmm. What kind of show do you imagine it to be? Like dancing. Mm -hmm. Women are dancing and 
They're wearing like big fluffy dresses. Mm -hmm. What's the next thing that happens there? I'm not really getting anything. Mm -hmm. So now go into your emotions. What emotions do you feel in this place? What do you imagine you're there to do? I think he's just wasting time. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything in particular. Mm -hmm. Just for entertainment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not engaged, you yeah. know, just get it, have a drink, watch for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Nothing else feels like it's happening. Okay. So let's close this scene and let's go ahead to another scene in the same lifetime that will give us some more information. Let's go to when something is actually happening. Be there now. What are you experiencing? The more you talk, the more you'll be able to see. This feels like a port town, mm -hmm. um, but like this, um, this place, this mm -hmm. brothel mm -hmm. place, mm -hmm. is like, um, by the water. Mm -hmm. But I don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. What are you experiencing now? What are you envisioning? There seems to be an upstairs and a, and a room mm -hmm. on the side that faces the water. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is a ship or if it's on land, like a cruise boat or if it's a, you know, a building next to the water. Mm -hmm. What's in this room? Well, I I feel like the man is up there, and there might be there are there's one woman. There might be two. Mm -hmm. One is I think standing, and I think one of them is like in bed. I think I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's not clear, but mm -hmm. it seems to feel like a room with the woman and the man mm -hmm. and another woman mm -hmm. and there's water over to the side like you know like the the boardwalk or the the edge of the ship the mm -hmm. i i think i let's see if it, i don't know if it's a water um if this is a ship or if this is a building next to the water What happens next in this room? I mean, he, I, I don't know if he's sleeping with that woman. Um, it's just a flash of a scene. Mm -hmm. I don't really, it's more of being the observer of it. Mm -hmm. What 
do you think that his role is in this place? Is he a visitor or does he have something to do with this place? He seems like a visitor. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting anything very clear about mm -hmm. him. Check in with the emotions. Connect with him, heart to heart. Okay, I'll try. I mean, he seems, even downstairs when he had the drink, mm -hmm. he seems not happy, discontent. Um, disengaged maybe angry mm -hmm. anything else important there in that scene I'm not getting anything cl cl uh, mm -hmm. deeper. All right, so now let's close that scene. Okay. And let's go further on into another time in that lifetime when something important was happening. I just see <coughs> um, old man in bed. Mm -hmm. So he must be much older now, much, much, much older. Mm -hmm. White, everything's white, like, you know, his nightgown, bed linens, his hair, he's pale, less hair, everything is, it's, um, he's upstairs in the bedroom, lying in the bed, and it's like, um, colonial, it's a colonial type mm -hmm. home, and it's the same era, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. you know, from mm -hmm. All right, so let's find out a little bit about what's going on here. Is this man by himself, or is he with others in that room? So I think he's alone in the bed. Mm -hmm. I'm just feeling to see if there's anybody home. I feel like there is a woman, like a, could be a wife. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel this man is now? What's happening? I just feel like... Maybe I'm the man that that I was. Mm -hmm. um, um, I had gone into a lifetime as a woman in this era of dress in colonial colonial town and I was married to a man who was wearing this type of clothing and um, this was my twin flame and that I know now and he was the man and I was the woman in that time I visited this lifetime mm -hmm. and now I'm the man I'm feeling that it could be this man that was married to her mm -hmm. because of course we're one so now it's making sense that I could be this man and I think she's the woman in the bathroom next to the room mm -hmm. taking care of me and so there are feelings of mm -hmm. you know bad feelings of 
being a married, well, I, this is coming from my perspective, not maybe his. I can't feel his, but my realization of when I was the woman married to that man, he was very disengaged and disconnected, but I loved him. Anyway, so he, I'll try to get back into his pers being in the bed. Mm -hmm. Step into him. Okay. And let's find out how he felt about his wife. He loved, honored, and respected her. And he knew that she was so good. But he didn't like himself. He couldn't reconcile his inner being. He felt that he had negative ways about him that he couldn't shake and didn't know why he couldn't break through and connect with her. Mm -hmm. And he drank either both to mask the discontent and to try to have a breakthrough as well. Mm -hmm. So let's bridge that today. I'd like for you to allow his wife to be at his side. Okay. And let's break this today. Let's join these two, two, two together, these two souls. Allow these two to feel the forgiveness between each other. I want you to feel her heart and have her feel his heart and the true love that's between them. Connect mind to mind and heart to heart and allow that exchange. They're just saying to each other, I love you no matter what. I love you no matter what. Mm -hmm. I love you no matter what. Doesn't matter what we do. Mm -hmm. so I that, love you no matter what. It's just pure love, that's mm -hmm. all. So allow all of that healing to take place now in his heart and in hers. So that before he transitions, it is all cleared. Let me know when it's done. Allow all of the burdens to be lifted off of both of them. Joining their hearts as one, acknowledging each as a twin flame, knowing that their experiences allowed them to grow in this lifetime. And let me know what's happening. He's... He's reminding himself. She loves me no matter what as he transitions. Mm -hmm. Very good. So as he transitions, I'd like for you now 
to tell me what happens to that soul. Where do you go as you leave that body? I feel like I need to rest. Mm -hmm. Where do you go to rest? I guess I could just say the arms of God. Mm -hmm. How does that feel to be in the arms of God? Comforting. Do you have a body when you're there? What do you see yourself as? Almost like the same, but in a light body. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to rest. And as you progress through that resting period, allow yourself now to leave that period of time when you're in that comfort of God's arms. And let's meet up with your guides, your counsel, those that assist you between lives there now. Where are you? I'm not sure yet. Mm -hmm. Allow the one that wants to speak today to connect with you. And let me know when we have a connection. There might, I feel like there might be a connection. Mm -hmm. Very good. Do I have permission to ask questions today? Yes. Thank you. Who am I speaking with today? Yeshua. Yeshua, thank you for being here today. Would you tell me why you showed Stephanie that lifetime of that man who visited a brothel? Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that she's accomplished that today? She feels that there's always more. Mm -hmm. So in this session today, she wanted to have that lifetime taken care of? She didn't know that. Mm -hmm. How was that lifetime affecting her? What parts of her life was being affected by that? She 
she felt that she couldn't trust. Mm -hmm. Was it because she wasn't to be trusted in that lifetime? No. It was because of what she had been shown in this lifetime. Ah, okay. How do you think that this has helped her today? Everyone has... internal struggles mm -hmm. it's never personal mm -hmm. what are these struggles meant to do for a person they're supposed to find inner peace Is that what happens, or do we stray from that? It's always an option. Mm. She had inner peace when she was the woman mm -hmm. in that life. And she has inner peace in her current life. But she's a witness to others who don't. So how can this help her with her career, with her relationships? Helping everybody see that they create their own inner struggles and only from within can those be resolved by letting go by forgiving yourself and by remembering who you are mm -hmm. as the self who you truly are from the source. How can we do that when we have so many distractions? By going within mm -hmm. and finding a place deep inside that is empty. Mm that is not filled with anything that is pure spaciousness all of the other things are spinning around on the perimeter of that inner stillness and inner spaciousness anybody can go ahead and pick those things up again that are spinning around them or remain it's the eye of the storm mm -hmm. you can stay inside that stillness with all of the rest spinning around you observing it you're welcome to grab on to anything and hold it as yours anytime you wish or you can let those go allow the velocity to allow them to spin off hmm. into outer space hmm. and you remain the eye in the storm that's beautiful. So how does someone get into the eye of the storm? Many have tried to meditate, 
and they just can't do it. They can't stop all the all those things that are whirling around. What's the best way for someone to get into that eye? The eye is the eye. E-Y-E is the I am. They have forgotten when they have trouble meditating. Mm-hmm. It is because they still think that they are they and they're still holding to those items that are supposed to be let go of that should be spinning around them. They're welcome to observe the items just in case they don't want to lose them yet. Mm -hmm. But if they're willing to let go, willing to release who they think they are, and sit in the remembrance of the I that means that they are coming home to themselves Home to yourself is the true self. Where you come from is where we all come from, one, the one infinite source. And if you can merge with that, even for just one moment, when you sit down to meditate, go within into your heart and tell yourself, I'm going to allow myself right now in this moment to merge with the one infinite source and let that bring to me the peacefulness and the stillness for a moment This means that it's not their responsibility to create it. They are reaching to welcome it in. Because the people who have trouble meditating are the people who are still attaching to owning the process and owning the mind, owning the troubles and the things that are swirling within them and around them. The key is to realizing it is not them. They do not own those things. And so to allow that one source energy to touch them even for a moment in the releasing of the ownership of who they thought they were, they are opening a doorway for that oneness to touch them. And when they release and allow the oneness to be filling them inside, then they can rest in the stillness and become the observer of their struggles and decide because there's spaciousness between them, self, and their struggles, then they can decide if they want that struggle, if they want to pick it up again, if they want to keep it released. They can decide in that spaciousness if they want it anymore. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want it anymore, they can just drop it and walk away and stay with the remembrance of who they are Mm -hmm. and they can help other people do this they can remind the other ones hey 
you are not that thought. You are not that action. You are not that belief system. You are not even the victim of that trauma and abuse. You are the one who chose to experience it. And you can step out of the victimhood of someone else having done something to them and decide that they don't have to own anybody else's troubles. They're not the owner of other people's behaviors and actions. They can release and give back, hand back the responsibility to the giver of the action, of the word, of the deed. It is not theirs to own. They can release and walk away and heal the pain. The pain is real. Mm -hmm. And if you go into the pain and you sit with your pain and you feel your pain and you love yourself, you can heal yourself. And then you can wake up your other brothers and sisters because you have seen the light. The light is emanating from your eyes when you have seen the truth. And this is how we wake up our brothers and sisters into the light. We don't stand on podiums and shout. Look at everybody doing these things that are wrong and bad. Look at them over there. Look, no, no, no. We forgive everybody for what they're doing because they don't know and they're still in darkness. But when we have light shining through our eyes because we are the ones that have healed and released and forgiven, all we have to do is tap our brother and sister on the shoulder. Because remember, we have a light shining through our eyes now. We just tap them on the shoulder and say, look over here, come this way. And we can share and teach them. We don't point our fingers at the other ones spewing darkness. That's not the way to wake up our brothers and sisters. We turn away and we walk away from that and we say, that doesn't have to be in our reality anymore. We can turn the other way and walk in the other direction. So for those who have trouble meditating, release the responsibility that you have to do something, that you have to control your mind, that you have to do something well. You don't. All I invite you to do is go within, focus your attention inward, into your heart, into your third eye. Be still for a moment and ask the one source of creation Enter me. Remind me that I am one with you. And that is all. Thank you very much. I think that'll help quite a few people. It's very simple. The greatest spiritual heights are through the most simple means. It's not complicated. 
people complicate things. They think there are all these things to do. Mm -hmm. There's not much to do. Mm -hmm. Well, some people ask, what crystal should I be using? What incense? Lighting? Well, there's beauty in all of that. Mm -hmm. The beauty is in the intention. This is the same as going within and asking to become one with the Creator. Because when you focus on the crystal, or the incense, or the lighting, you're communing with the beauty and the energy mm -hmm. of what has been brought here into the physical to remind you of that one. So any, you can use any tool of beauty, of creation, as a means to bring you there. And so if a person feels more comfortable, even more powerful, using a tool, a mantra, a song. There are beautiful melodies and mantras and songs that people are using to connect. We couldn't be more pleased because these sound waves, the vibrations, the singing, the chanting, the music is a direct link. We brought these things here for you. The waves of the ocean, the melodious waves of music, use everything here that has been brought to you for raising your vibration. So by that, it is connecting into the vibrations of the different elements that are on this planet. When you go to other planets, you get to attune and entrain your vibration to those elements. But while you're here, you have a unique opportunity to attune your vibration to the elements of the earth. The elements of the earth are contained in stones and crystals, even in the incense they came from the earth. Could you explain to me why we would choose relationships that are so difficult, so challenging? People who are of good heart, connecting with those that are narcissistic. There's a great push. You could see it as a tidal wave. Mm -hmm. With all of the narcissism on the planet now, this is the tidal wave coming to cover humanity. Humanity has a choice. How are they going to respond to this incoming tidal wave? That which would smother them, crush them, and I could say kill, but there is no death. Mm -hmm. When the tidal wave is coming, what do you do? You have a choice. You have many choices. Some people choose peace. I choose peace. I'm going I'm not going to let this tsunami ruffle me. I'm going to learn how in the face of any storm I can find inner peace. That's a choice. It's a it's a journey. It is I'm giving you an analogy that looks like an instant, but we're talking about a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Some people might look at the tsunami and fight it off, grab their sword. I can fight this wave that's coming to kill me. That doesn't work. A sword cannot cut through water. Okay, so that, the mm -hmm. fighting against the water, it never works. There's a little inside secret there for you. Thank you. So those who choose to fight against the wave, the tidal wave, the tsunami, will never 
never win. They would be better to lie down, hold their breath, and let that wave pass over them. And they will be able to come up for air on the other side. Some people run away. It still gets them. So it looks like those who choose inner peace through the storm are the true survivors. Because no matter what is coming at them, they cannot be knocked over. So it is not to engage with the wave. For people who are experiencing narcissistic people in their life or any abuse, walk away and find your inner peace. You have been given the greatest challenge as a way to achieve inner peace. Work at it, find it. It's there. Do not blame the other for giving you the gift of finding inner peace because your gift will come when you find that. That is your reward. Forgiveness is key. You are being handed a gift. There's nothing to forgive. Take your gift and go. It's not the reality of the, the wave is not to engage with it. So you don't need to use tricks of the mind to say, oh, I'm supposed to stay here and play. Not when there's a tsunami. Mm -hmm. But we're born sometimes into narcissistic parents. Sometimes we marry narcissists without knowing it. Sometimes we live in countries where all of our politicians could be acting in a narcissistic way. It's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. This is a play. Every single instance of this for you is for each of those individual souls to find a way to get to inner peace forgiveness and love they are not meant to love the narcissist directly mm -hmm. they can love themselves enough to move away from that wave which will knock them down the, the wave is meant to knock you down the wave isn't going to stop mm -hmm. on its trajectory so you're going to move away from it eventually if you're a child and you have a narcissistic parent, you will grow up. If you're in a marriage to a narcissistic person, we gave you the options. Take out your sword, go ahead and fight. You already know that doesn't work. You could run away. You're still not solving the, the issue of finding your inner peace or uh, creating distance because it still gets you. So the distance, the, the healing comes with the the inner peace. So all of these scenarios in a country where politicians, this is not one country on the planet, this is most, mm -hmm. the people. This do not need to look toward those people. They can stay in their living room. They can sit on their couch. They can find the inner peace. They could turn off the TV, throw away the newspaper, turn off the computer. Go ahead and have a seat on your couch, on your floor, on your bed. Lie down. It doesn't matter what position you take. Find your center. Ask me to come in to your heart. And I will be there. The narcissism on the planet is a push to get more and more of you souls into the light, 
into the peace. It's temporary. Do not project into the future of generations to come. We need you. We need this push now to get you over here onto the side of the light. What's going on right now that we need to have these souls into the light? Cycle of time. Mm -hmm. It's time. There's a creation cycle. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Everyone's coming home. There are cycles of time that have been swirling around in, in a circular motion. There's this one that's coming to an end. And we're scooping you all up bring you home in this one. Mm -hmm. Is this what they call the event, the shift, the new earth? Or you're calling it the cre creative, the creation cycle? Yes, it's all the same. People feel it mm -hmm. coming, so they'll mm -hmm. put a, a term to it. I see this as a, a wave. Mm -hmm at the end of a time cycle, washing everybody over to, and to the light. And yes, the, there are new earths being created. Some of you are not finished with this creation and will continue this over. There are multiple earths. Mm -hmm that you can go to. That do, do they all look the same? You might not. Some people can see the difference mm -hmm. and feel that they're different. Mm -hmm. um, Are people nicer, for example? Yes, so everybody will be very happy to go there. Stephanie went there mm -hmm. in, a, in a dream. She knows one of them. There are other ones that are matching other vibrations. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so everybody's... So I'm watching this title. I'm watching these waves coming through, washing them over to these different earths. Mm -hmm. And it's... Some people have fear mm -hmm. of what some people get tum tumbled mm -hmm. when you're in the ocean and that wave comes and it tumbles you down into the the sand it's scary mm -hmm. you don't know you lose control you don't know when you're going to stand up again because the wave is it's very strong but it does it calms down again and you can stand up some people are caught in the tumble right now and that's okay because everyone should be awakening not everybody will awaken in the same way or time frame but a lot of people are being tumbled right now but there are so many on the shore watching them saying you can do it it's just one little wave you don't realize that but you can stand up in a minute and then they come onto the shore. And this is this is one way of getting there. There are other people who they're not being tumbled. They're ready. They're they found their inner peace mm -hmm. and they just float. <laughs> are some on surfboards? Oh, those you know those adventure types. <laughs> They're always riding the waves of excitement and fun. Mm -hmm. Thrill seekers. Mm -hmm. Yep, having a great time. So this wave is the wave of awakening? It's the wave of awakening, and it's the wave of how people are getting to the new earth. Mm -hmm. New earths. Okay, there are 
a more, few. There's mm-hmm. a few. Yeah. So there, are these new Earth have different vibrations. They, d- they do. They're slightly variant. Mm-hmm. I guess people are tired, because why would there be such a? This is your creation. Mm-hmm. The, the reason I'm asking and answering these questions is it seems that people are fed up. Mm-hmm. So the people who are very high vibrating are saying, I only want my vibe here. And so this new earth is very high vibrating and that will be for those who resonate there. Mm-hmm. There are some people who are still in the mix. I like my high vibration, but I think I might want to have a beer every once in a while. Mm-hmm. So there'll be a slightly lower vibrating earth with a bit, It's I wouldn't even call it polarity, but because you understand the terms, the slightest variation, I could say, of, mm-hmm. dim, of uh, frequency there. And so on and so on. Now the earth that you're on right now has an extreme degree of polarity. This is the earth that is coming to an end not in an end in a way that is destructive or sad. In a way of the end of the time cycle and this shift into the other earths because people have chosen a new expression, a new experience, less polarity, much, much, much less polarity. So more harmonious? Way more harmonious. Mm -hmm. Some places some earths are complete harmony mm-hmm. every once in a while you have your the slightest disagreement but we wouldn't even call that disharmonic because it's resolved in an instant with the um, way that you communicate there is heart mm-hmm. based mm-hmm. and I wouldn't call it mind based but it's telepathic Yes. And yes, you're still using language, but the telepathy overrides a lot of time. And the heart, the language of your heart is felt and overrides both the telepathy and the mind. So there's mutual agreement. It's very easy. Mm-hmm. Now, in this new, these new earths, are we going to go there with our existing bodies? Are we going to be born into that? Are we going to wake up one day and be on this new earth? How does that work? A lot of people have fear about, do I need to die? To go there to are somewhere? multiple ways of getting there. I would like to share with you, Stephanie would like to share. She had a dream of waking up in the new earth. She had this dream in 2007, she didn't remember the date, but it was in 2007. And she woke up there and she went outside and she met with her sisters. And none of them looked the same, but she recognized every single one of them. And they were all in different bodies, including herself, perfected human bodies. And there was only joy, love, and harmony and peace. And she knows about going there. Mm -hmm. So the other ways There will be accidents, meaning death, Mm -hmm. and people will wake up there. It's an easy way to go. And on these new earths, Mm -hmm. what do we do there? Are there jobs? Well, you do what you love. So Mm -hmm. you're never going to stop being a creator being. Mm -hmm. You will always want to create once you've reached that level, which you are. Mm -hmm. You will create beauty, harmony. Harmony is created through music. When I said harmony, Mm -hmm. I meant music, art, 
mm-hmm. love in multiple forms. Well, we need to be eating in that place. It's a choice. Mm. You don't have to. So we don't want, have to worry about food production. Not in the same way. Mm-hmm. The the plant kingdom will provide for those who would choose to eat, mm-hmm. because eating can be a very delicious experience Mm -hmm. and people enjoy that and they would like to continue experiencing that and so there will be fruits on bushes and trees Mm -hmm. there will be many delicious fruits and vegetables I'm just checking about the animals. Mm-hmm. No more killing. No more killing. Your bodies will not need that. Some bodies need that in on this earth. The new bodies d- will not require... Well, they will not require eating. And so there will be no killing of animals for food. Is it necessary for us to prepare our present body for this new earth? Only in your consciousness, not with what you eat. Mm. However, your consciousness is connected to your vibration. Certain chemicals and foods will not be resonating with you in your current vibration as you raise your consciousness. This is individual. There's no judgment. This planet was created for human life forms to eat animal life forms for survival and nutrients. Besides that, there's nothing you need to do physically to prepare other than continuing your shifting with your vibration and always falling into alignment with that. Meaning, if there's anything that you're doing, thinking, or saying that is out of alignment with your current vibration, which is also your current state of consciousness, you will be pulling on your vibration, we could say, Mm -hmm. and you, it's pulling, it's like when you're pulling on a out of tune instrument Mm -hmm. and it doesn't sound harmonic. Yes. Yeah. So you want to align with your vibration. And so anything that you think, say, or do that is out of alignment, it will not feel right. So if it's a food, a chemical, a word, a thought, you want to continue to refine and drop and release yours to continue to move and shift with your ever-shifting vibration. So in order to get to the new earth, uh, I'll correct that. In order to be on this earth and be comfortable as it's shifting, continue to refine your alignments. Many people ask me, how do I raise my vibration? Match where you are at the level that your higher self is trying to connect with you. So. It's not that you have to be 100% your higher self, but begin 
tuning in to your higher self. Connecting at that level and allowing that part of you to guide you. Always. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that is your inner voice, your heart. It's not the noise or the mind with the should. It's the quiet times when you're waking up in the morning before you're awake. Right at that moment, before you wake up, when you're waking up, listen. If you want to receive messages, give yourself a question before you go to sleep and listen when you're waking up. So for everybody, connect with your higher self more and more and follow that inner guidance. When you don't follow that inner guidance, does that affect our body? Many people have allergies, aches and pains, things like that. Yes, yes. You know what you should do. A moment ago I said, don't listen to the shoulds. Mm -hmm. There are some shoulds that are nagging at you that are coming from your higher self. Listen. Can you give me an example of what that would be? When people are told in, on the inner planes their, by their higher self to exercise, to go for a walk. Mm-hmm. Listen. Stop smoking. You know, that's a very strong one for people. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of denial in the minds of the smokers and they know, they already know, but mm-hmm. their higher self is the one putting that pressure on them. Mm-hmm. Drinkers, they already know. So, they have to find a way to release the addiction. Mm-hmm. And they can do that with the help of their higher self and me. So if someone wants to, for example, stop smoking, would they be doing the same thing as you explained before, the meditation, allow you to help them? Yes, but it comes with the purity of their choice. Mm -hmm. They have to really choose that they want to stop. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those that in their belief system, their religions, they don't believe in you? These are people from other religions, Buddhists, Sikhs, Muslims. But I am the one. (laughs) (laughs) There's nothing to believe in. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is in their heart. They exist. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to believe in. It is. Existence, life, being. Exists. I'm in the heart of every, everyone. Mm -hmm. I am not one. I am all. Mm -hmm. So what name can they place on you? What they choose that they feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. If they like the word life, Mm -hmm. I'm life. If they like the word God, I am God. Mm -hmm. If they like the word oneness, I am the one. If they like the word air, I am the air. They breathe air. 
They have to believe in air. <laughs> Whatever floats their boat. <laughs> they can believe in themselves. Okay, good. Good. They don't have to believe in any thing outside of themselves and they will have it. Are we not all part of the Creator anyway? We are all one. Mm -hmm. Stephanie had a lot of questions about twin flames. People call, talk about soulmates, twin flames. There's a lot of confusion about that. Can you explain to her? Yes. Mm -hmm. I do create multiples. This is a choice. When they are ready to be challenged, mm -hmm. to face themselves. Not everybody is ready to face themselves in such a way And those who have chosen are ready. And sometimes they regret asking for this choice. Mm -hmm. Why do they regret that? Everything is stripped bare mm. to the truth. And seeing the truth in front of your eyes is not always easy. Mm -hmm. But they are willing to see with their heart and that is the challenge and that is the gift to see with their heart that we are all one and you are me and I am you so can you tell her explain to her what the structure of the creation of twin flames is all about when they are ready. Mm -hmm. When a soul is ready? Yes, a mm -hmm. soul. Mm -hmm. We can divide into multiple, multiple aspects to play the game. Mm. We always come back into one. but we can come down and play together as one. Mm -hmm. And is there a collective purpose for them on the planet? When more and more people can see with their heart and create love from the place of pain. It develops an increase in the quantity, the quotient of love. The souls who have chosen to, to divide and split and be in multiple bodies are up to the challenge to create more love on the planet because they're, they are they have the willingness to see with their heart beyond all beyond all misdoings she gave you the example of the couple Mm -hmm. where the woman forgave the man. Yes. Now the man hadn't forgiven himself. This is what kept him locked into his suffering and locked into his uh, detachment from her and the outside world. He was maintaining an inner struggle I lost my train of thought. What was the beginning of the showing you this couple 
This couple was an example of this. So the woman had the forgiveness in her heart. She could see with her heart. Oh yes, she could see him and she could forgive him, but he was the one who needed to forgive himself. Mm -hmm. And the only way he could have broken out of the chains of his own making was to forgive himself. The only way that he could have loved her was to have forgiven himself. Now, in the end, you guided her, thank you, to bring that unconditional love so strongly mm -hmm. to him so that he could somehow accept it into his heart and forgive himself. This character has not quite done that. In this lifetime, she knows who he is. Mm -hmm. He's working on this, this same theme in his current expression. Mm -hmm. And she knows uh, that he is and loves him unconditionally witnessing the same as in that mm -hmm. lifetime. So it takes some souls multiple lifetimes to work through particular themes. Going back to answer your question, these souls have decided to show, it's not showing the planet, but vibrationally it is showing the planet that we can see ourselves and we can love ourselves and we can release and forgive all misdoings just like Jesus did. Mm -hmm. His life was about forgiveness and love and compassion. And he was a great teacher and he did come to show the masses. And so the masses can go back to remember, not go back, but keep in their hearts that knowing. And the mission of the Twin Flames is the same. Mm -hmm. Why are there so many meeting at this time? Because that tsunami is coming in order to give everyone or as many people as possible rephrase that everyone an opportunity to become enlightened we we place more we offered this opportunity to more and more mm -hmm. souls to show humanity what it means to love what it means to forgive, and what it means to be one. The souls who are walking around in multiple bodies are experiencing life as one in multiple, in a multiple. Mm. And it is hard to do that because what you feel is what they feel. What they feel is what you feel. You are existing together. You're existing as one. And it is a challenge. It is an extraordinary uh, feat to take on while in a human body. And more were up for the challenge at this time. And so more being here now are activating people for this wave that's coming. When I say this wave that's coming, mm -hmm. it has been coming. It's still coming. It's mm -hmm. still going to come. It's not a one-time event. It's a continuous stream and flow of energy, a wave of light, a wave of energy that is continuing over time. So the twin flames on the planet are healing themselves. And as they do, they're healing humanity and they're bringing more light here and preparing. It's part of the preparation for the new wave of consciousness. Hmm. And I know Stephanie knows this, but for everyone else, how do you know that you've met your twin flame? You know because they are you. You cannot mistake knowing mm -hmm. that someone is you you they are inside you that other being mm -hmm. is inside you 
And it's very supernatural, Mm -hmm. surreal, for them to be standing in a body outside of you. Mm -hmm. They know. If they have a question, Mm -hmm. if they have doubt, they don't know. But the ones who are, know. Mm -hmm. Do these have to be romantic relationships? No. These are beautiful replicas of souls. It's not the, quite the word replica mm-hmm. because it's not exact. There are nuances, difference. Are they all the same age? No. They're as varied as humans come. Mm-hmm. Every race, every age, every ethnicity that one soul can incarnate into multiple of these variances, age, race, religion, sexual orientation. The greatest variety that exists Mm -hmm. is how they incarnate. Would you tell me the different levels of twin flames? For example, monotic twins. Would you explain that? rays Mm -hmm. so there are rays of light Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh streaming down from the different levels of creation and so these can be There can be a life stream on the ray coming into a body from different levels of creation. And so a person can have more than one twin flame because they're recognizing their multidimensional existence as a soul, as a being of light and multiple rays of light that come down from the multiple layers of their being. And so, when you meet the different ones, you could feel they're still you, still you, but at a, at a higher level or a, or a different level. But it's all still you, one. You are a multidimensional being. Every every one of you is. And so if you can access multiple versions of existence of you, this this is what the, the question is about. Mm-hmm. She had different uh, types of twins, oversoul twins, soul flint twins, what the differences this is are. This, mm-hmm. There are multiple uh, layers, mm-hmm. levels mm-hmm. of the being that you could call you, mm-hmm. but it's multifaceted. And so... You can have incarnations from multiple aspects of you. It's it's a simple answer, and it doesn't need to be more complex Mm -hmm. for your understanding. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between a soulmate and a twin flame? Yes, because a soulmate, you're going to be in soul groups with beings from other over souls mm-hmm. okay your twin flames share the same one mm-hmm. over soul mm-hmm. and a soulmate is someone who is in your soul group yes so you could have many many 
many, soulmates. Many, many, many. Many people want to, to meet their one soulmate, and it seems that there are many soulmates. Oh, well, your soulmates are in your soul group from every relation, children, parents, friends, etc. Mm -hmm. And your one, you would like to say that people are searching for their one true love. Mm -hmm. And this is because they have a soul memory. They have a soul memory of their one true love. They have many one true loves because uh, multiple soulmates will uh, take that role. Mm -hmm. And so from lifetime to lifetime, you will encounter these beautiful soulmates who will come in to be your love and or your twin flame will fill the role as your um, love, true love. And so people are searching for true love and connection, and this will come in the form of a soulmate or a twin flame. And it is not always the same one. So from lifetime to lifetime, you will say, in this lifetime, let's do this. Mm -hmm. In another lifetime, let's do this with another one, and so on, or more than one in one lifetime because as we know life is a journey of ups and downs and things happen and so we like to make sure that we have some opportunities mm -hmm. for love now does stephanie have more uh, soul extensions incarnated in this earth that she hasn't met there are there may be more. Mm -hmm. She will always know. Mm -hmm. Well, or have a strong feeling. The knowing uh, she always knows. She always knows. And what did what did she in particular, her soul, co come into so many bodies? It's to spread light. To spread light. Is she doing that now? Yes. Mm -hmm. They all, all of them are. Mm -hmm. In different ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, she has questions about one particular twin flame that she has. Um, why has she had that soul agreement with this one particular one? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. So this is the soul agreement? Ultimately, mm -hmm. the, the, in order for this to be achieved, mm -hmm. there needs to be a play enacted. Mm. The romance, the connection, the recognition, the love has to be there in order for the pain to be inflicted. In order for that forgiveness to be needed to come into the equation, all of that had to be there. Mm. That's the soul agreement. That's the soul agreement. Mm -hmm. So can we do some of this forgiveness work today? Would you allow me to help her release some of that today? Sure. All right. Would you help me with this today? I'm going to place my hand over her heart. And I'd like to ask for that divine light to come in through the top of her crown. And as it begins flooding through, allow all of that anger, all of that pain, resentment, hurt, to begin flushing out through my hand so that we can send it right up. Kind of like how you would flush out something that's dirty. Use that light to go through in her entire body. Let's flush out all of that. Give it all to me so that I can release it. And as that white light continues to flood in through your body, allow it to just infiltrate every cell and every space between the cells of all of your body as it flushes out all of this pain and anger. Is 
and tell me when it's all gone. It's all gone. Very good. So allow me to give that to the universe. What would you like to put instead in that place now that we've put that light in there? Just love. Let's fill that with love, a fire hose of love as it pumps through your heart and into every place of your body. Thank you very much. Would you tell me how she looks now with that forgiveness? She looks good. Mm -hmm. very, Light. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Now, we had talked before about narcissists, and she had a question if they could heal. Is that possible? Well, it's possible for everyone to heal. Mm -hmm. However, usually it's an inside job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's been given as a gift. However, uh, externally, you know, from divine. Mm -hmm. For a narcissist to heal, they must be willing to let go mm -hmm. of the ego protection that they have created mm -hmm. around them and be willing to come into their heart and release their pain. Mm. So they need to really work on themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. And why is it that in Stephanie's life and in so many people's life, they continuously connect with narcissists? The narcissist is attracted to their light mm. because they want to see that mirror and they hope that they can somehow have that light. Mm -hmm. Does it help them at all? Not in this lifetime. Mm. But they will have seen that light. Mm -hmm. Would you tell Stephanie about her work? She's doing energy healing. She's doing hypnotherapy. She's doing those wonderful oils that have been given to her through Source. What else would you like to tell her about her work? Everything is perfect mm -hmm. and will continue to evolve. She's on her way. Mm -hmm. Who does she work with on the spiritual side when she's doing her work? She works with me. Mm -hmm. And what about her teachings? She wants to know what's the best way for her to teach. She will teach. She will rewrite. Mm -hmm. And she will speak. Okay. So she's on the right path of, of thinking what she's thinking now. She, she knows. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when she speaks about all of this enlightenment, and twin flame information will she be channeling as she speaks she channels okay she's it's not she does both mm -hmm. her higher self is embodied in her body mm -hmm. so she when she speaks she's not channeling mm -hmm. but to others it sounds like feels like this mm -hmm. because they don't know that a human mm -hmm. can have that mm -hmm. wisdom inside and they think that must be coming from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing she does is she can channel, mm -hmm. or access is a better word, mm -hmm. every, all light beings through her who wish to, you know, speak. Mm -hmm. She's already experiencing this. And so she'll expand to, to invite others. When she writes her books, will she be able to access this wisdom in the same way? Yes. Very good. I've been told before that even though we are light workers, that we still need to strengthen our body. This is the, this is key mental 
emotional and physical strain. Mm. And because you are in this world, you, not you, everyone is you, mm -hmm. you ask this question for humanity. Mm -hmm. Yes, humanity, you need your body and you need to be strong. Obviously, to walk up the stairs, to uh, open the door, you need strength to be in this physical world. And so, yes, it, it, the the days of physical labor, for the most part, for most of humanity, are over. However, you have those facilities, gyms. And so why are people going and lifting heavy things? Mm -hmm. It's because the elimination of the physical labor and now you have to uh, supplement. Mm -hmm. So even though we're sitting and meditating, we still need to be doing exercise. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for those who wish to be uh, in the sky all the time. <laughs> so what's going on with Stephanie's body? Can you do a scan on it and let's see what's going on there? Reminders. Mm -hmm. And she knows. And so uh, she knows what to do. And she will... She loves to be physically fit. It feels very good. Mm -hmm. And so... So would you tell her about her joints? Those are the reminders. What are they reminding her of? Oh, to go back to her yoga mm -hmm. and, uh, and her strength building. And this will be like oiling the joints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. wonderful for her and she knows. And it's just a slight reminder. There are no long lasting effects from this reminder. Okay. What about supplements? Does she need to take anything extra to help her joints? There's one, mm -hmm. which is a fish oil. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a DHA mm -hmm. in that, mm -hmm. something like that. And she could use the, some of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Could you begin healing her joints today now that she has that reminder? Yes. Thank you. And let me know when I can continue. My grandmother, mm -hmm. uh, her grandmother, mm -hmm. she shows her mm -hmm. in her third eye mm -hmm. the uh, arthritic hands mm -hmm. to remind her you don't want it to end up like me. Okay. And so the fish oil came up and the exercise. Mm -hmm. Good. What's going on with her left foot and ankle? It is uh, like a cast mm -hmm. from the past that she needs to let go of and release so, so that she can move on. What, what happened in that past life that she this is not a past. Oh, okay. Oh, from this life. Mm, yes. All right. Figuratively a cast. Okay. That is, you know, uh, encapsulating her ankle and foot. So it needs to be, it's holding her back. It needs to be released All right. for her to move on. And it's only very temporary because whenever she is about to enter a next level, mm -hmm. new stage, this shows up. Okay. And so she can just shake it off and be willing. Mm hmm without fear to enter her next stage of life. All right. So can we create a big zipper in that? And let's begin unzipping yes. that cast. Yes. It could take as long as as quick as she wants. It's quick. We're going to take good. it right off. Good. She's ready. Good. Release it and send some of that healing light into that left foot and ankle. Thank you. Why does she have nerve pain in her hands and toes on the right side? She, she is doing, her intention is good, mm -hmm. but she doesn't remember to uh, go to her activities that she has signed up for mm -hmm. already. Mm. She has a monthly membership for flotation. 
clothing mm-hmm. and massage. And she doesn't go so she very needs, often. So she needs the floating like a, a meditation? It is herself. very, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is a very deep mm-hmm. meditation for her. Yes. And the, the water uh, serves her. Okay. So we need to get her into that. Regularly. Into that flotation. Mm-hmm. Bath. And she knows this is a very easy thing to put on the schedule mm-hmm. every month. Very. And good. the massage. That's all. And when she treats her body in these ways that she knows that she needs, mm-hmm. on a regular basis, she does not need to have any reminders. Okay. So she's forgetting that her body is reminding her. So she has to remember mm-hmm. that her body is reminding her. Would you tell her what's going on in her nostril? Why it's clogging up the breathing every once in a while. She could improve her breathing. Mm -hmm. So actually working on breathing Mm -hmm. will help her. Uh, That's all that is needed. She can do more specific uh, breath work. Breath work. Okay, very good. Would you assist her with that, reminding her? Yes. That she needs to breathe, that she needs to breathe with both sides. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is there a reason why she's keeping one closed? Is this an emotional block, perhaps? Is perhaps one side of the body working more than the other? Not getting a specific, not getting anything specific. Mm -hmm. Just the breathing. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. What about her incontinence? You can tell her about that. (laughs) <laughs> she gets tired of the physical life, you know, here mm-hmm. on Earth. Mm-hmm. Is that a representation of that? Yes, I mean, it's a letting go. And so, you know, you know, there's fatigue in, in living a physical life. Mm-hmm. She's had plenty of fatigue. Uh, so she, ne- she needs to strengthen that area. She'll get, she'll, should she seek out some skilled practitioner Mm -hmm. who will be able to help her in that area. Very good. Very good. Is there anything else that you would like to tell her about that? Sometimes she forgets that she's a healer. Mm -hmm. She never forgets that she's a healer for other people. Mm -hmm. But sometimes she forgets that she can heal herself. Mm -hmm. So she should try. So can we begin today? Yes. To heal that. And tell me when it's complete. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Are there any others that would like to say anything to Stephanie today? Perhaps those that have passed onto a different realm and are helping her. Any messages? Uh, 
Well, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. I do feel Michael Newton came through. Mm -hmm. He came in the beginning, and he's just saying, you are free to transform my work. Now, I don't necessarily have that intention. However, I did not agree with him in many ways. So I understand his message. Mm -hmm. He is giving me f complete free freedom. And he is happy mm -hmm. about that because he doesn't want the world to be stagnant. Mm -hmm. He sees where he was. Mm -hmm. Maybe not always mm -hmm. right. Does he have a message for me today? Oh, he's just thrilled that you're doing this work and just congratulations and thank you and keep going. Don't burn yourself out. Know when to say no, know when to stop. Mm -hmm. Know when, and you do this very well, have the boundaries and you will write that book. Mm -hmm. And if you want any help, he's always available. Wonderful. For you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Is there anyone else that would like to tell Stephanie something today? She's fine. My friend mm -hmm. who died when I was 10, when she was 10, she's telling me that she's fine. Mm -hmm. Good. Very good. Is there any other message that you would like to give Stephanie or anyone else at this time? The message for humanity is to find your inner light. To be honest with you, you it is only you. So you are creating your world when you're focusing on everyone else out there it's it's a deception that has been purposefully placed in this game but the uh, key I'm letting you in on a little secret to solving this puzzle is to turn inward. I'm, of course, repeating myself, but mm -hmm. this will be helpful for everyone to turn in inward. What does that mean? That means closing your eyes, being still for a moment, taking some deep breaths, bringing your focus inside. You can imagine that you're bringing your focus not necessarily to your physical heart, but to the center of the chest near the heart and having a knowing that your inner being is there. When you do that, I want you to then expand into that inner being. So you're not, so initially you might feel like you're going into the space in your heart center, which might feel small for a moment. But then when you're in there, you can expand, keep expanding, and now you're you. So be you for a while and then feel what it feels like to be you. What you may experience while you're experiencing you could be expansiveness. There could be a spinning of energy. 
Some people might feel heat. And just notice what you experience. Welcome the experience. Sit with it. Remember how your thoughts are those things that are swirling around outside of you. Let them be outside of you. Let them not be you. When you're in this space, know that this is you. The gift of meeting yourself is that then you can walk around in this world being you. And what Jesus said when he said, be in this world, but not of it. This is how you do that. You be your expansive self, which is not originally from here, so you can be here because you are here, and you can be not from here. And when you are this expanded self, you're doing several things. One of the things you're doing is you're inviting your higher self to merge with you. Because in that expansiveness, you're basically saying yes. And then your higher self can reach you and touch you. And you will find your light more and more. And you will see that your creation, that is your life, will shift. And you will actually like it more and more. So anytime you catch yourself pointing fingers in your mind about everyone else, you can drop down into this meditation and everything around you will change because guess who is creating it and you will to you will prove this to yourself by changing you wonderful thank you so much welcome back you did wonderful Oh, thank you. How do you feel? Whoosh. Oh, I just need to... Let's give you some, sh some shungite here to oh, ground you. Let me have some of that oh, selenite back. These got really hot. Yeah, they do. Oh, huh? my gosh. Let's put some of this in to balance you. So how long do you feel you're oh. on this journey? Maybe an hour and a half, hour. Two hours. Two hours. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was amazing. Wow, yeah. It started off kind of interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah, what's that all about? I didn't know that man in the... You know, you sometimes feel like you're just making it up. Or yeah. You just see one yeah, yeah. image and you think it's nothing. Yeah. And then it turns into something, but you don't know that's coming. Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't even know where he was. No. Brothel? Yeah, it was hard to, to admit it, you know? <laughs> 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 like what is this place? It took a while to come. It's like, is that what this is? I don't even know what that is, but <laughs> <laughs> then he was upstairs. Yeah. And I could see something. Yeah. Yeah. So you understood that it was a house of pleasure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm, I didn't really interesting. I wasn't it was I didn't like that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. But then we had an entrance. A very nice uh, source. Yeah. A lot of information there. Yeah. It's energetic. Yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah. I could feel it. You know. How did it feel? Actually, in the beginning of the session, 
during the induction, um, vibration was happening yeah. in my body. Yeah. So I thought, okay, this is good because if my mind isn't going to take me there, my the energy will, and yeah. um, it's working already. So I knew. So how did this compare to other sessions that you've had? Was this more information? Yes, they're all different. Yeah, they're, they're all different. They're all so different. So you felt this was basically you were a messenger. It yes, it <laughs> felt like definitely felt like a give, messenger. Give this information <laughs> repeating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess people need to hear it over and yeah. over again. Yeah, because in different ways, and this was a beautiful way of explaining it, which is the eye of the storm. Yes, and it was the eye, eye of the storm. Oh my god. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. And it seems like when, when the message really comes in so pure, it's so easy to understand. Yeah. You know. And you know that visual can help people too. Like, okay, yes. I just need to be Yeah. still. Yeah. And yeah. everything can be still be there swirling around me. Exactly. I don't have I can still own it if I want to. Yeah, if you grab want to grab it, it and make yourself a little crazy for a while, you can. <laughs> but it gives people the choice. Yes. It start, suddenly there's a yes. spaciousness to say. Yes. <sighs> and that's what people need. They yes. just need a way to get there. Mm -hmm. Own it and make it you or make it not you and find freedom. It was great. Oh. So this is a shareable one. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Cutting out a few little yeah. personal things in yeah. there, but I thought that was really so, cool. So, wow, that was an amazing session. So how do you feel? Well, I, my, I feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to recover. Uh -huh. My head feels weird. It's a very energetic experience. Yeah. When you first started, I had vibration going through my whole body. Mm -hmm. Um but I feel good. Yeah? I feel good. I feel giddy, like joy. Yeah. So how did it feel to have this voice going through you? Familiar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very, um, very, very wise. Very, mm -hmm. you know, um, very good. Now, when we first started, it was Yeshua. Yeah. But then I think it's... It just more... I was just thinking about that when I just got up to go to the It went further. It... it, it, it it begins that mm -hmm. it's almost like a seed. Yes. But then it becomes the the one. Yes. Yeah. Because we, I had asked the question, what if people don't believe in you? Because it was still, you know, I had in my mind it was so Yeshua, and, and then it, it was like, no, I am, I am it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you asked that, yeah. it was one. Yes. It wasn't. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I asked that for a reason. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because a lot of people say, well, I'm. I'm from a different religion. I don't mm -hmm. believe in mm -hmm. Jesus. And it's not, you know, and it religious. Wasn't. And it wasn't a religious thing. It's no. like you have to believe in 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 the one, in the oneness. And and right. that's why it gave so many different examples of just believe in the air, for God's <laughs> sakes. I am everything. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, they breathe. <laughs> that's right. So so we got into the twin souls. Did you, mm. Do you feel that you had your answers? Yeah. The curiosity that I have in the human body, yeah. I know doesn't really matter yeah. if I find out or don't find mm -hmm. out. And in that moment of asking, it didn't, I knew it doesn't matter if I understand the structure yes. in a, in a metaphysical way. Yes. Um, but, and I still don't under, I think we can't understand it and mm -hmm. that's okay. And it's okay. meant to be that way because we're not here in a human body to understand a f spiritual concept or mm -hmm. even energy at that level. Mm -hmm. um, but I was seeing layers of color, mm. very um, uh, intricate, L many levels, layers of colors and rays coming down from all the colors. Interesting, like a rainbow or like yes. a prism. Yes. I say? Like a prism. And then coming in and that's mm -hmm. who we are as twins. So we're ah, multifaceted, nice. multi dimensional mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what about the narcissist um, no that was interesting to see the wave come it, yeah it, it, you know anybody who's dealt with that knows yeah. the analogy is given it was wonderful yeah it was fantastic yeah fantastic. so we don't need to psychologically scrutinize mm -hmm. oh why you know me, why me why me why but am I doing more of what can I be what can I be, can I be? now um, 
Stephanie also does this work. She's been hypnotized many, many, many times, and she also does hypnosis. So explain to everybody what you do. Well, I've been a hypnotherapist for about 13 years, and I started with Michael Newton's work, mm -hmm. The Life Between Lives Hypnotherapy, back in um, 10 years ago in 2007. And so we it's very similar to this mm -hmm. work. Um, but I also do energy healing. So I do that worldwide mm -hmm. on um, Skype and phone mm -hmm. and um, in-person sessions. So how can somebody reach you if they wanted to get a hold of you? Um, Where are you and how can they reach you? So I'm in the Washington DC area and I have a website. It's stephaniecraft.com, craft with a K. Mm -hmm. And I have another company that actually um, is came out of a hypnotherapy session in a way, message from my soul. And it's called Called Radiant Sun Botanicals, and I um, make natural body care products, infusing my energy healing and essential oils into those products. And that website is radiantsunbotanicals.com. Mm -hmm. And can they purchase it online? Yes. And what about the uh, the healing? Can they do that through Skype? Or? Yes. So on stephaniecraft.com on my mm -hmm. website, you can choose energy healing and that's the only thing I do from a distance. Mm -hmm. I only do hypnotherapy in person. In person. Yeah. Fantastic. So what would you like to tell the people of what's the best way to get yourself prepared for a session like this? Well, I mean, people who are coming to you, I know that you want them to, to listen, maybe listen to mm -hmm. some I think practicing is important. So mm -hmm. since I have already mm -hmm. had hypnosis before, um, I didn't do too much preparation, but for anybody who's new to hypnosis, before mm. you come see Alba, I would recommend she has online on her um, YouTube channel something you can practice with. I actually did that mm -hmm. a few times and um, do it as many times as you can, not with pressure, just letting go and letting her right. voice become the background mm -hmm. so that you can, are familiar with it and it can be... Um, a tool to help you relax and learn to get into hypnosis but any hypnosis that you can do before you come is going to be really really helpful to help you get deep and make the most out of your session and even if you have someone local in your area even going for a session to mm -hmm. prepare yeah. is really helpful so mm -hmm. don't just come cold turkey because I don't know if you've ever had any that didn't work but I have people who mm -hmm. are very um, I've had a lot of people who actually think that they're really good at it because they meditate, mm -hmm. but I feel like they've taken control of right. their mind right. and they don't, it doesn't work very well. Right. You have to be willing to completely let go. The way I went, Let it flow. Yeah, let it go. The mm -hmm. way I came into it and um, have come into previous sessions that have worked well is said, I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I, I'm inviting my mm -hmm. guides, teachers, ancestors, angels, mm -hmm. God, my soul, my oversoul, my higher self. I just say that everybody, you do it for me. I'm not doing mm -hmm. anything. So when I asked Stephanie today, what, what did she expect from this session? She says, I have no expectations. And that's the answer. <laughs> no expectations. And it'll really go exactly how it needs to go. So if you want a session with me, go to albawyman.com. I do my sessions in English and Spanish all over the world. If you are not local to me, you just go to uh, my out of town page. There is a sign up at the bottom of the page. Sign up, you'll get a newsletter. It'll tell you where I'm going to next. And right now, we are in Sarasota, Florida. So we did. I did travel here for a conference, and Stephanie attended a conference, and she did a session too. So I hope I get to see you sometime soon, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And until the next time, bye! <laughs> oh my gosh, thank the you best so much! Thank you.